seven tabs for those who are following in the uh, uh, schedule of events, if you will, and once we begin our meeting, we'll begin with tab number eight. But uh, prior to formally calling to order uh, this evening's meeting, we're following in tradition in Cobb County for many years to begin the evening with an invocation followed by the pledge to the flag, and this evening will be no different. And this evening's invocation will be given by Reverend Sam Story, the Associate Pastor of the First United Methodist Church of Marietta, followed with the pledge by 10-year Deputy Sheriff um, Ed Evans. And for those who choose to participate, please stand and join us with the invocation and the pledge. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this and redeem of our lives. We are all glad to be part of Cobb County and live here and we give you thanks for the many blessings that thou has indeed bestowed upon us in this great county. Lord, we acknowledge you as the leader of our lives. We pray for every family in this county. And Lord, when we stumble, and when we fall, we ask you to pick us up. We acknowledge that we are always not perfect, and we stand in need of your grace and your guidance. Lord, be with these commissioners, these elected officials who have been entrusted to lead this county. May they continue to be godly men who stand for godly ideals and godly wisdom. Lord, bless us as citizens that we might stand tall and always walk in your steps. We give you the praise and the glory for all that you do for us. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you both. We now formally call to order 
the regular meeting of January 25th for the Cobb County Board of Commissioners. As I said earlier, we will begin with tab number eight. However, prior to beginning uh, with presentations, we have six non-agenda items. I'd like to uh, for members of the commission to read all six and then ask for a motion to adopt as uh, formally as a part of tonight's agenda. <coughs> the first one would be uh, tab 12A, item number one, economic development, a request for establishment of a small business insurance pool for Cobb County licensed businesses. The second one is tab 18, item number 10, community development, request for county attorney to institute appropriate litigation against Jay Sims and Susan Maddox. The third one is tab 20, item number three, Department of Transportation, request adoption of a policy whereby the Barrett Parkway extension would be a limited access highway. The fourth one is tab 20, item number four, Department of Transportation, request to conduct appraisal of property previously acquired but no longer needed by DOT for the east-west connector project and additional proceedings authorized by the Georgia Code. Number five is on your book tab number one it's actually tab 21 and it would be item number two under the county manager it's a request to transfer up to $50,000 the general fund undesignated contingency to pay all costs associated with publishing FY93 annual report. And on that same tab, item number three, a request approval of Slavin, Nevins, and Associates interim recommendation for 1994 merit award for all full-time graded employees. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the design. Second, second, call the question. Motion carried. The non-agenda items are approved. Okay, moving right into uh, tab number eight, uh, is presentations. This evening we have. Uh, uh, one presentation, but it is to a very distinguished group, and it's a presentation of certificates of recognition to the Economic Development Incentive Task 9. Uh, local department, we have this evening um, the opportunity to conduct a second public hearing on the proposed amendments to the Cal County Community Relations Council and adoption of same. Uh, Kate, would you like to make some initial remarks, please? Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Um, as you stated, Chairman Brown, this is the second public hearing on proposed amendments um, to a resolution which created the Cobb County Community Relations Council. Um, we had the first public hearing two weeks ago. Um, what we seek to do in these proposed amendments is to have the manner in which the members are uh, chosen to this commission to um, be aligned with the manner in which other members are chosen to other commissions and boards throughout the county. Okay, thank you. Uh, speakers this evening who choose to speak, uh, can sign, if you have not already done so, can sign up over here to my left, to your right, and uh, we will stay here for as long as there are speakers who want to say whatever they choose to say. and. Um, the speakers will be uh, given a three-minute time period in which to make their remarks. And uh, Councilor, if you will, notify the speakers at a one-minute uh, point in time so they can anticipate bringing their uh, remarks to conclusion. And if you will, please read off uh, the names. As to the few minutes ago, there were eight people signed up. Uh, you will read off the first name and ask the first speaker to come forward. Ms. Edna McHugh. Gentlemen, I'm Edna McCallum, 811 Drive, Maryland, Georgia. I'm here to plead with all commissioners to retain the 1989 resolution regarding selection of the Community Relations Council, known as the CRC. 
This council is so valuable and necessary for mediating social concerns, problems, or disputes before they become problems that have to be handled by you. You're the elected body whose duty it is to concentrate on fiscal, developmental, and infrastructure operations of Cobb County. Social concerns issues can only be effectively handled by a non-political council such as the current CRC. We're now seeing in Cobb County some radical groups with disturbing agendas. In the past, CRC has effectively quelled problems such as cross burnings in yards of innocent citizens because of their skin color or harassment of Hispanics. CRC needs to continue as an effective non-political body for such problems that are facing minorities. And believe me, they are out there. Now, I beg you to retain the only group able to speak for social injustice aimed at these minority groups. I ask you to refresh your memories. Reverend Martin Nimrod, a German Lutheran pastor and revered theologian who was imprisoned by the Gestapo in 1938 and freed by the Allies in 1945, told how things, things came to pass in his country. The Nazis first came for the communist, and I didn't speak because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I didn't speak because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me, and by that time, there was no one left to speak. I hope that should this come, there will be someone to speak for me. Could you put your mic up closer to you? Dr. Frank Miley. Dr. Frank Miley. <laughs> well, that's pronounced Neely. Good evening. When the Cobb County Commission passed the unfortunate resolution of August 1993, the only voice in county government to speak out against the measure was the hitherto invisible and virtually unheard of Community Relations Council. Commissioner Gordon Wysong was clearly irritated by the censure and said at the time that he did not think it was the place of the council to criticize the actions of the commission but to smooth things over. Ever since he made those remarks, I wondered about the actual intended function and purpose of the council, so I acquired a copy of the October 9, 1989 resolution which brought the council into existence. At the outset, the resolution states that the purpose of the council is to cultivate and encourage unity and to pursue efforts to improve community relations among all citizens of Cobb County. In this regard, the resolution goes on to say that the council shall encourage and endeavor to bring about mutual understanding and respect among all racial, religious, ethnic groups, and special populations within Cobb County and to enlist the cooperation of community organizations and groups within the county programs and campaigns devoted to the advancement of tolerance and understanding. In no place does the resolution say that the Community Relations Council is to serve as a propaganda arm or as an Orwellian Ministry of Truth for the Cobb County Commission. The commission, by the way, has the Communications Department under its wing, which is charged with, with the duty of disseminating, disseminating information to the press and to the public. So if anything, the council was created to serve as a watchdog, which would ensure that the rights of all citizens of Cobb County were protected. And so, when a governmental entity, the Cobb County Commission, seemingly overstepped its authority and passed a resolution that was calculated to promote disunity, disharmony, disrespect, and intolerance among the residents of the county, the Community Relations Council had no choice but to speak out against the measure. Council was merely fulfilling the purpose for which it was created. And now, because the Council had the courage and forthrightness to speak out against what are perceived to be an injustice, the County Commission is attempting to bind the Council in the shackles of political servitude by giving itself total control over the appointment of new members. It does not take a 
feat of intellectual gymnastics to realize that a council stacked with the political bedfellows and commission members would be as effective in addressing community problems as it would be to place a band-aid on a broken arm. By no stretch of the imagination, does the council be committed to the advancement of equality, uni unity, tolerance, and mutual understanding. At best, the council would be a charade and encouragement. Your remarks to a close your which your time is. Yes. The bottom line is, if the method for appointing new members to the council must change, if the council's only vestige of autonomy must be taken away, if the council will not be allowed to carry out the purposes for which it was created, and finally, if the council will not be allowed to retain its integrity and act according to the dictates of its collective conscience, then I respectfully submit that it would be better for the council to be dissolved and thereby die an honorable and glorious death rather than to continue to live in humiliation, shame, and bondage. That is what the redoubtable patriarch <laughs> That is what Patrick Henry meant when he uttered those immortal words, give me liberty or give me death. Understanding that the Cobb Community Relations Council was designed to objectively assess and make recommendations concerning harm toward and discrimination against the citizens and uh, of this county while promoting unity <coughs> and improved relationships for all. They were acting in good faith and courageously so in recommending against passage of the Cobb County Commission's anti-gay resolution this past summer. The refusal of the Macon City Council to even debate such a resolution the alteration of a Texas County Commission's anti-gay stance, the overturning of Colorado's anti-gay amendment by that state's Supreme Court, and the recent $100,000 reduction in the Fulton County Commission's support for the arts while leaving $3,900,000 of support, knowing full well that that investment paid for itself many times over, are merely illustrative the government needs to be as unobtrusive as possible in the lives of citizens. The government needs to listen to its citizens, give them spirit, optimism, and above all, promote unity and not division, love and not condemnation. We all need objective persons to give us feedback. <clears throat> that is a very good reason for the county commission not handpicking a human relations council, which can very easily become a rubber stamp council. This is a very active commission. There are many, many problems for it to tackle right here in Cobb County, which increasingly is being recognized around the world for its anti-gay, anti-art stance, and, and for the showpiece chicken franchise outlet in North America. The Super Bowl is already here. People are looking. The Olympics are coming. People are looking. Our children and other loved ones are here. They're looking. Please do not make agents of the Human Relations Council. We need to hear other voices espousing love, tolerance, and even disagreement. We need to be proud of being from Cobb County. Please rescind the resolution, or at the least, pass another resolution, including and not excluding all persons of all races, creeds, and sexual orientation as our brothers and sisters right here in Cobb County. Thank you. representation by the people for the people. I value minds that are open enough to encourage every citizen who wants to sing out to sing his or her own song, but not so open as to give freedom to those who would harm other individuals or the moral spirit of our community at large. The best communities are those where its people work and dance, play sports, and make decisions with freedom and justice for all. 
When it comes to decision making, the more input from the citizens, the better will be the carrying out of the decisions that are made, and the better will be the spirit of the community. I would like to share a modern day parable to make my point. In the essence of the time limits, I'm going to give you the first half of the parable and the next speaker will finish the parable for you. Since each of you commissioners was once an adventurous 17 year old young man, I would let the two heroes in the story be 17 year old Ryan and Bob. It's summertime. They work hard at their summer jobs on weekdays. They're looking for some summer sunshine and a break from their routines, so they decide to go to the beach for a couple of days next weekend. Neither boy has worked long enough to have his own car, so each boy agrees to seek use of his family's car. Ryan goes to his dad on Monday evening, four days before the planned outing, and says, hey dad, Bob and I want to go to the beach next weekend, and we're looking for wheels. How about if I take the Ford? Ryan's dad replies, well, son, I guess that would be a fun thing to do, but the tires on that car are pretty slick. It wouldn't be safe for you to drive to the beach. Ryan, like many healthy 17-year-olds, is not one to hold back his thoughts, so he says to his dad, come on, dad, that's just an excuse. If the tires are too slick for driving to the beach, they're too slick to drive around town. They just need to be replaced. What you're really saying is you don't want me to go to the beach. You won't know what I'm doing or who I'm with, and that makes you really nervous. Face it, dad, you just don't want to see me doing things on my own. Ryan's dad is incensed at this and he shouts back at Ryan. I can't believe you're talking to me that way. You have no right, no right at all. You should think yourself lucky that you ever get to drive that car. You just go to your room. But Ryan doesn't. He runs out of the house and down the street with an energy that fits his age and passion. He returns in a few hours, but the household remains frigid for days. Ryan moves out of the house in the following few months. And although he continues to see his dad from time to time, their bond is more one of duty than of trust. Marjorie Macy, who follows me, will finish this parable. Thank you. Marjorie Macy. <laughs> I'd like to pick up with the um, second boy. That same Monday evening, Bob goes to his dad, different family, and asks to use the family car. His dad replies with a concern about odd sounds the engine has been making. <laughs> Sounds like an excuse to me, Bob complains. I think you just don't want me to go to the beach. If there's something the matter with the engine, it needs to be fixed anyway. Let's call a spade a spade. Wait a minute here. Bob's dad sat stunned. He took a couple of minutes to reflect and then came back with, do you think you could have a look at that engine with me? The repair was not a simple matter, but over the next couple of days, father and son had the car in good working order. They talked about concerns that the dad acknowledged he had, re he had regarding the two boys being away with the family car in unknown territory. They looked at maps, made agreements about phone calls to be made. They talked about drinking. They talked about drinking and driving. They talked about girls. They talked about finances. Bob drove, and he and Ryan had a great time and a safe time. When Bob returned from the weekend jaunt, he talked with his dad about some of the good times he and Ryan had had. Bob moved to his own place in time, but he often stopped by to see his dad. He just wanted to. The family tone was rich and strong in Bob's family. So there it is. One father tried to hold down his son, didn't want to hear his ideas, was easily threatened. The other dad acknowledged his own concerns, worked with the son, provided opportunities. The atmospheres in the two households were vastly different. What kind of community spirit shall we encourage? Shall we encourage unbiased representation, or shall we stifle voices of the many so that a few can maintain control? That kind of control can win out for a short time, but crumbles with the test of time. With this vote, commissioners, you will paint an image. What will it be? Will you look frightened and controlling? Will you stifle for a short period and then be voted perhaps out of office? Or will you invite and celebrate the myriad voices of the community and let our county blossom?
Good evening, I'm Brenda Givens, the Chairman of the Community Relations Council. I have a statement to read from the Council uh, that met yesterday. Um, the Community Relations Council met Monday, January the 24th, to discuss a resolution which you will consider this evening. This resolution primarily serves the purpose of changing the manner of the CRC member appointments. It is our position that the Council, established by the Board of Commissioners on October the 9th, 1989, was, was structured with the intent that the body become comprised of independent, volunteer Cobb County residents of diverse backgrounds and interests. The focus of the CRC mission, positive community relations, is unlike that of the county's many boards and commissions. It requires an objectivity, sensitivity, and independence from other motivations. With this current structure, the CRC has been effective in addressing a number of issues. This council has never had, nor to our knowledge, been accused of having a predetermined or biased agenda, other than an interest in working with, uh, working for non-divisive positive community relations. We believe adoption of the proposed change will adversely change the public's conception of this council's <coughs> motive for having such a body and impair the effectiveness of future councils. We hope the Board of Commissioners will consider, will carefully reconsider their direction. It is the desire of all the members of the CRC to continue the work of the Board. We assume that the current members will continue to serve under the proposed arrangement and focus on important issues and impact that impact the residents of Cobb County. Now that's the statement that we had yesterday. Now, there's just one thing that I want to address, and that are two things I want to address. One of the items that we covered over 1992 and 93 was the Smyrna Police Department Hispanic issue. That is an ongoing issue and has gone over a year in a period, um, a year's time. And my concern is that if the commissioners appoint and those officers are going in and out with elections and positions, how do you keep the continuity of the of the urgency of an issue that affects a particular area that does not affect Cobb County per se but affects Smyrna and those people and you need the continuity of those representatives to to help and to motivate and to mediate the situation as needed if you go out with the election positions you lose that continuity um, also I I'd like to reinforce that we fully understand that we serve as an advisory capacity and that our recommendations are not binding and therefore why change the appointments with all the education and the understanding that we've tried to do for the diversification of this county why disrupt that and assign it to an election position that's all i have CRC. Years ago, we've had many problems in Cobb County. <coughs> we fought long and hard to develop the CRC. Now, in reference to your proposal to change the structure of the CRC, let me say from the outset that your proposal may be detrimental to certain segments of the population in Cobb County. Now, I'm not going to elaborate on that. A few years ago, and prior to the establishment of the CRC, we had some serious social and racial problems in Cobb County. But the present CRC went about the business in a quiet, methodical manner in addressing some of these problems. And no, Mr. Thompson, we were not set up to handle all of the ills in the world. One of our mandates is to cultivate and encourage unity among all county residents and organizations, free from political motivation, free from political persuasion, 
known as the Wasong. We are not your adversaries, nor were we intended to be your agent, but we were intended to be your eyes and ears, another independent voice. So in regard to the idea that you want to bring the present CRC in compliance with your other board, <laughs> let me say this. It was never intended that this council be structured like other boards in the county. Due to the seriousness of the problem we were confronted with a few years ago, your predecessor felt the need that this council should be objective, sensitive, and independent from other motivations. In closing, we sincerely hope that you gentlemen will carefully reconsider your direction and allow the present CRC to continue to work with the board and focus on important issues impacting the residents of Cobb County. Thank you, sir. citizen and um, when I first moved here about two days later they passed this anti-gay resolution and um, my mom was saying how she was watching it in Seattle and, and people that I my father lives in Colorado was watching it and um, I just think that I mean people around the world were watching this stuff and I mean if you can have a body they can stop that kind of stuff from happening before it even gets to you guys. I mean, wouldn't that be beneficial? Don't you think that they could probably smooth things over or work something out or something? But, um, I mean, to waste taxpayers' money on a stupid issue like a gay ordinance, I mean, that's really, really childish. And it's a waste of my money, and it's a waste of everybody's money. And besides, it's not, I mean, who are you guys to decide, you know, what's right and wrong, morally or whatever? You know, your job is, is financial and, you know, the business, the county business, but it's not in people's bedrooms. So anyway, um, I'm just, I'm for uh, keeping things the way they are as far as this, uh, this board or whatever. But, I mean, you guys want to appoint your own little uh, people to be yes men to yourself and, and you know, who knows where it's going to go from there. So anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm a concerned citizen. Thank you very much. number eight and say something new, but I would like to talk about diversity as being a strength in our community and how the uh, current nomination process ensures that diversity on the uh, Community Relations Council. Um, to me, the United States was set up to be a great big melting pot, not a sorting bin. And um, uh, by doing the melting pot, we're able to forge country of strength, a country that has different backgrounds, different religious beliefs, uh, different races and ethnicities that they're all listened to. Um, and by being listened to, it gives us strength in our community and in our country, and it makes us one of the finest countries and not the finest in the world. By the proposal, um, I think that I do not see any benefit to the proposal. I feel like the nomination process um, serves this diversity and um, thus serves our community. And I would like to speak out against that. I would like to commend the Community Relations Council and the fine job that they have done in the past. 
and I'm not referring to the much publicized uh, um, stance of the Community Relations Council on the uh, anti-gay resolution. I thought that was appropriate. But I'm talking about how they improved racial relations within this community. That was the original purpose of why the Community Relations Council was set up to improve racial harmony. They've done a fantastic job of doing that. <laughs> and I think, I think that they should be commended for that. Thank you.
I see us give awards to one woman, one black, and ten white men. If y'all, if y'all, we have a excuse huge just black woman, sir, Excuse me just one moment. If this turns inflammatory, I'll have you removed. Okay. You can make any comment you want, and you can address it to whom you want. But if it turns inflammatory, and or in any way it takes <coughs> any commissioner up, or I'll have you removed. I'd just like to say, if you all are appointing your own members to the commission, we're going to see more white males. This commission is supposed to represent the entire community. This county has a huge black population. This county has a huge Hispanic, huge Hispanic population. If you all appoint your own members to the commission, <coughs> those people will not be represented. I urge you not to pass this resolution. Subhash Razdan. I am uh, originally from India and now a citizen of U.S. have been in Cobb County for the last 10-15 years. I am one of the council members, CRC, been there for the last three to four years, even been a chairperson of the Economic and Employment Commission. I want to request you that this is a fine this is a body of fine young people, men and women. They are men and women of integrity, honesty, independent thinking. Please don't politicize this group. Thank you. who chooses to come forward to come forward at this time. If there's anyone who chooses to make any further comments. Okay, hearing none. Gentlemen, this closes the uh, second public hearing. And we have before us the proposed amendments to the resolution creating the Cobb County Community Relations Commission. The, by and large, the recommendations uh, or amendments as has been spoken to this evening is if the uh, majority of the uh, folks coming forward have addressed the concerns about the makeup of the board and uh, just for informational purposes for those uh, who choose to listen that over the course of this year we have addressed the majority of the boards that this board forms. And uh, what we have chosen to do from day <coughs> one is to ensure that those elected to office are participating uh, with their appointees in all of the variety of committees um, that we're involved in. Looking back this week over those appointments and reappointments, by and large, the majority of the people who were ser serving on those boards uh, are still there. I can speak from this commissioner's perspective <coughs> that should we adopt this ordinance this evening that my three appointments will come from people who are already serving. I believe the CRC has done a phenomenal job. There must be a freedom in which to evaluate all of the community relations problems that we have assumptions are being made and being spoken to uh, this evening and those assumptions obviously are being uh, formulated on distrust and I sincerely understand that. That doesn't make them real and I would suggest that uh, uh, should these amendments be adopted this <coughs> evening to take a wait and see attitude. 
I know in my year of being in office, I've had no less than six people addressing one of the concerns here as why change the people involved who have asked to become involved. And I think it's important that we allow as many people within the community to serve the community, and getting people involved in government and getting people involved in the system. I know uh, is of paramount importance to each member of this board up here. And getting people to get out of their living room and get involved in government is like pulling teeth. It is very, very difficult. There is no board that's perfect. There's no board that can't be improved. And that is uh, the intent with regards to the makeup here. It is by no means to establish a rubber stamp board of any nature, certainly not this one. Uh, having said that, uh, gentlemen, we have before us a recommendation of staff with regards to the amendments of the resolution, and uh, I will open up for uh, a motion. Mr. Chairman, before I make a motion, I, I would like to add a little bit to what you said. I think part of this is the need to form a coherent working relationship with all the boards, authorities, and commissions in this county, which we have done with the vast majority. I have, to this date, had communication with one member of the CRC who has ever come to visit me for any reason or called me about any subject in the year and a half I've been in office. And I assured that person that I would reappoint them to the council because of their interest. It is the need for a working relationship that is the reason that we change all of the boards and commissions, and this is no exception. And I'll make a motion to adopt the changes. Do I have a second? Chairman, I'll say that I'd like to make a comment too. Um, the turnover in the boards where I have appointments to make, I can only think of three that I have made changes in, and they were due to resignations. Now, how someone can sit out there in the audience and read my mind, I don't know. I think you have jumped at conclusions. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make any changes or not. That's very serious to that I will. We were just trying to conform this group to the same rules as that others do. And for group, you to stand up and accuse me that I'm going to change, I doubt very seriously that I will. So I think you were premature in there. Um, you know, you, you talk to us about hatred, but yet I see some hatred coming back our way. I don't have any hatred. And I doubt I'm being re I'm reiterating. I doubt very seriously that I will change my mind. So, how you can read my mind and say that I am? I think that's being unfair to me. And for me to do things for a political gain, you know, two or three times during the course, I was threatened with being voted out of office. Uh, I don't know what I'll do for the years now. I may not even run. Um, I, I do not do things for political posture. I am here to represent the people that I saw. Any other? Comments before we call the question? <coughs> yes, I'd like to make a couple of comments, please. And I've made some notes for myself here because I tend to forget things. Number one, I'm only speaking for myself. Uh, I'm not going to presuppose what any of the members of this board do or do not do or who they choose to nominate or not. I think we've already heard two commitments up here. <coughs> and, and Commissioner Weissong also indicated that, that he intended to go to the existing board. I, for myself, can say that all my appointments will come from the existing board. Uh, the only caveat I can put on that is one of the limitations I have on me as being commissioner for District 1, I must appoint someone from Kennesaw and someone from the city of Ackworth. So hopefully there will be individuals on the board that, that fill those squares. Uh, that's, that's very appropriately set up that way in order to get representation from not just the general committee but from specific cities. So all my appointments will, if possible, given that one statement about Kennesaw and Ackworth, will come from the existing board because my philosophy about appointments since I've been up here has to be a point people that number one want to serve, number two people that will are willing to go to the meetings, that are willing to participate. As the chairman said, it's it, it's like pulling nails sometimes to get people to sit on these commissions, of course, because they're 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 thankless positions, or the unsung heroes of the county, as I as I've stated before. Uh, I want to bring people in that want to be that want to be a part of the process, and I can very proudly say that I have yet to make a political appointment since I've been up here. I go to the, I've gone, just recently, I went to the minority community and made a new appointment to the CCT board because I felt it was critical that that community have a voice 
continue to have a voice on that CCT advisory board. And I went to that community and, and obtained an excellent appointment for that board. Um, I differed, uh, obviously, on a major issue this summer with, with my other four commissioners. <coughs> And I, and I do that as, as, a, as a matter of my own personal philosophies and personal principles, and everybody has to vote their conscience up here. And I don't pre presuppose to judge anybody's conscience. <laughs> For you to, pre to prejudge my conscience, or how I might make my appointments, I consider personally insulting, especially with the stances I've taken in the past few months on behalf of the com certain communities out there. Uh, my philosophy on this is just the same as the other commissioners. We need to bring this board in so that it's representative of the commissioners with whom they may serve. I don't believe I've ever been approached in my office by a member of the CRC has ever come to see me that I can remember. And I might have been three years, so I might be mistaken. But I will go back to the same CRC and look for appointments on that board because I think you have done a great job. And I think you'll continue to do a great job. And there is no intent, at least from this commissioner's seat, to prejudice that process. It needs to be an open forum, but it also needs to represent the elected officials for whom they speak. I think that's critical, and I want us to be able to work with you, and that's why I want to know the people that are on the board that I serve. And I reiterate, not one of you folks has come to my office in the three years I've been up here. I don't say you have to come to my office, but if you want input from us, we've got to have a two-way dialogue. It's got to be a two-way street between us. So that's where my that's where my appointments are coming from. It's from the it's from the existing board. Uh, I appreciate all the work you folks have done. Uh, I. I I do believe on the fact that I think you prejudge this board and its intentions. And I can understand some of your skepticism, but I think it's unfounded in this case. And I, I want to continue to work with you, and, and hopefully we'll develop a better relationship, and you'll continue to perform the excellent service you have for the three years I've been on this board. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any further comments or questions? Okay. Call the question to approve the amendments. Motion carries 5-0. What I would like to do, as we have done in the past, is to put a time frame of 60 days from this date in which to make reappointments and those who have not at that point in time the existing appointments will stand anybody have an objection well you've already introduced me so When I moved here, I was told this was a growing, affluent, educated community. Better educated than us, that other portions of Atlanta. I think I got a snow job. For all this time, I have lived with my partner and I thought was a tolerant, educated community, judging by our interaction with friends, neighbors, and acquaintances. Your alleged family values resolution past this past summer screams of ignorance and, from my viewpoint, abuse of your resolution encourages prejudice, and I do not believe that is the role of government. You should not be allowed to subordinate a class of people just because you don't like them. Your comments, Mr. Wysong, show me that you're not an informed individual and maybe not based in reality. The religious right wants you to believe there is a specific day of This person, if you will, address your comments to the board okay. and not single okay. out one commission. Okay bent on undermining our society. If you were truly informed, you would know that's, that's not true. The judgments are wrongfully influenced by the gay agenda video, which carries a wealth of misinformation, innuendos of child molestation, all put forth by an authority PhD who has lost his license in the state that he practices. I'd be willing to bet that Dr. Stark would be more than glad to present you with the correct statistics if he has not already done. I want to be judged as an individual, just as everyone else should be. I want to be seen as a loving person who has a successful, monogamous relationship and the same basic values as everyone in this room. How can you judge me and my values when you have absolutely no idea who I am? I have the opportunity to travel a great deal in my work. I've met many people from countries, religions, and cultures. I've learned to accept people's differences, judge them by how they treat me, not by what they believe, and I really don't care who they're sleeping with. A colleague of mine read the resolution and Mr. Weisman's comments, and 
Cherry already mentioned the N word. I'm not going to mention it. But the fact that it came from a German citizen had a great impact <laughs> on me. To uh, quote the gentleman that was here before, all I see here are five white middle aged men who inspire no confidence that my concerns for this community will be considered. Mr. Thompson, we own two properties in your affluent conservative district. We are lesbians. Do you represent our views? I hardly think so. We are relatively affluent and conservative. Now we're downright angry. The only thing that is homogenous about Clark County, in my mind, is this commission. I hope you will somehow rescind the anti gay resolution, examine your own agenda. One minute. Get a grip on reality and attempt to make Clark County a nice, safe place for a Thank you.